Okay, so I wasn't gonna make a video today, but then something crazy happened. So if someone had told me a few years ago that this was gonna happen, I would have laughed and said, you're an idiot. Because it's just really unlikely. This is not something that I expected at all. You see, I wrote a book and today it was launched. And that's what we're gonna talk about today in this video. Let's go. Okay, so I know you're surprised about this. And hey, quite frankly, I'm surprised too. So Invisible Speed, that's the new book that was released today. And it's all about car setup. Okay, so the book is available online, invisiblespeed.net. It's a web shop where you can buy the book and also some downloadable content. And if you buy the book, the downloadable content is free. So <laughs> don't make the mistake of buying both. So anyway, let's go and check that out actually. Okay, here we go. Uh, so basic uh, web shop here. Looks good. Popular products or one product. One thing is popular here. Uh, some links, some news items. Go check it out, invisiblespeed.net. Okay, we'll go see the book. So check out with PayPal, finally working. Had some issues with that. So the contents, we can, we, we'll check this later on a bit more in detail. Uh, currently, the book is actually being uh, finalized still. So we're working on this actually. So the layout, this isn't the final layout. This is just a teaser here. So we're working on the layout. It will be printed and then they ship out. So this is a pre-order right now and uh, shipping January 4th. Hopefully we can ship earlier, but January 4th, that's where we're at right now. And um, so what's included, we'll get, it, get into that in detail later. So if you order this book, you also get some free downloads. Now, what are the downloads? If you don't buy the book, it's 10 euros. And with the 10 euros, you get a bunch of documents. Let's see what this is. These are helpful documents that will be updated with additional and more accurate information over time. Depending on the quantity of downloads and feedback, we will also offer it in different languages. It currently includes a matrix of setup changes and which conditions they are recommended for and which they aren't. Okay, let's open this file actually. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I don't know if this file will be up before or after the video, because I haven't finished it. That's actually funny. Currently, the people that ordered this, they just got a file that said this. Hilarious. They must be so happy that they just spent the money and ordered this. But it, it's not a scam. Trust me. It's not a scam. It's a real thing. Let me just show you. So here you can see what the document is. Basically, it's this system where you have a setup change. For example, well, let's go to something a bit more complicated here. Uh, let's go to diffs are always fun. Let's check the diffs. So thicker diff oils. On low grip, we don't recommend that you go to thicker diff oils. High grip, yes, thick oil, thicker diff oils are good. Uneven grip. So uneven grip, a condition where high and low grip exists mixed. A car will easily spin out in a corner, for example, if the rear end is loose. So uneven grip, thicker diff oils are good. Smooth track, thicker diff oils are good, more drive, faster. Rough track, not recommended. So thinner diff oils. On a low grip track, thinner diff oils are recommended. It's good. High grip, not recommended, rather go thicker. Uneven grip, not recommended, rather go thicker. Smooth track, well, it's they aren't bad on a smooth track, so it's kind of a preference thing, so just leave it empty, it's ambiguous. Um, rough track, thinner oils, definitely good. So this is what's done for each different sort of setup change. Just a sort of recommendation. So you can see, okay, it's recommended for this, not recommended for that. Dep you need more information. It's sort of um, uh, ambiguous. You can't say yes or no. So, so that's the first page of this. Second page, which isn't done at this point still. I need to fill this in. 
add this information but the idea I'll just show you the idea so the idea don't read these these are probably all wrong I just copy pasted the idea is that we want to achieve something so I set up improvement so I want more overall steering or I want more steering into the corner so again the same thing what do I do on a low grip track high grip track uneven grip smooth track rough track so what do I do to achieve some something uh, that we determine here like better jumping ability better bump handling uh, what to do first on a low traction track what to do first on a high traction track we'll we'll add, add those two but here I'll actually do it so what to do first low grip high grip uneven grip smooth track rough track you know uh, so that's the idea of this page and then the next page is similar but a bit different same same but different so here we have a problem that we want to solve so front end is too twitchy or front end turns in well then the car pushes or rear end is stuck in corners with too much grip or rear end spins out mid corner or car bad in huge holes or car wanting to flip over due to bumps and then we go is it low grip high grip uneven grip well, if it's bumps, smooth track isn't relevant. Rough track, of course, is. So you get the idea. Then these two last slides, improving the setup and solving an issue, uh, we'll also add specifically for the black editions. And then later on, we can actually add other car brands also. So this will become a really good document to have because you have a lot of helpful setup information and also specific setup help for a particular car and another thing we can add later on is actually I wrote it here let's go check out the website again so here it says that uh, additions during 2021 shock spring rate comparisons a CG calculator and then like I mentioned so that specific uh, set up ideas for a particular car okay so for for the ten dollars for the documents or if you buy a book these are free with the book you get one year access to any updates to these documents so as we add more information here you can just go to your account let's log in quickly here whenever it's updated you just download the file here and you're good to go and then when the year is over you just sign up again for 10 euros if you want and then again you get all the updates for a year so that's how this is going to work so before we go and look at the book details let's go and see who has actually ordered the book because it's been online now for a few hours so we got some orders in already so let's go and check that out i'm going to bring you behind the scenes here I just logged into the back end of the web shop to check some orders. Okay, so yeah, it looks nice. People have found the web shop. They're buying books. Jesus. What? Check this out. Even world champions are buying my book. That's crazy. Okay, let's see who else. Let's see who else. What? Huh? Uh, I got you, didn't I? Of course he didn't. It's Ricardo Monteiro or Caralho. Made you look. Okay, so with all these uh, celebrities buying the book, this got me curious. We need to go and check out the power rankings of books. Here we go. Boom! I knew it! Okay, so we got some legit orders in now. I mean, we have a world champion, we have some random Portuguese guy, so it's all good, I think. Um, let's go and look at the contents, because that's key in a book, isn't it? Like the actual contents of it. What's it all about? So let's look into that. Oh, I, I need to remove myself here, I think. Okay. Let's zoom in a bit. There we go. 
So what's in the book? We start off with a bit of an introduction. What's it all about? Back to basics. So the controls, uh, radio, servos, how to build a throttle and brake linkage, how to build the car for durability, words about the clutch, how to build a differential, basics of maintenance. Just to get that out of the way, because it's really important to have a good base to start, start with. Then we go into why do we need a setup? And this is actually pretty important because everyone doesn't know. Why do we need to adjust the car? What's the reason? What are we trying to achieve? And then after that, we break it down. So we look at tires, load transfer, body pitch and roll, roll centers, and the different types of grip. And then we conclude that section. This is all information that you need before you start setting up the car. You have to understand what we are trying to achieve and why we make changes to the car. Like what, what's the goal? Why not just run the same setup always? What is it about the car that requires us to make changes? So we talk, uh, talk about that. Okay, so then we go on, we talk about learning setup for yourself. Uh, we talk about all that geometry in a car. So the roll centers, jacking forces, camber gain, how and why to adjust roll center. So all the different ways with upper links, upper link angle, length, height, axle height, lower arm height, and then the handling traits with different roll center settings. And then of course, a summary of this chapter because roll centers are so complicated, really. We go on to camber, camber's effect on handling, how to set it, caster, kingpin inclination, kick up and anti-squat, front and rear toe, anti-roll bars, ride height, down travel and up travel, and, and the different ways to adjust down travel. We talk about wheelbase and track width. That's a big one, you know, hexes and hub position. It's not easy, really. When you look at this, you think that this sounds really simple and easy, but it really isn't. Like the level of detail going into talking about just hub position or hex width, it's next level, really. Next level. Let's continue. Then we talk about steering angles at the Ackerman angle, uh, suspension, so shock oils, springs, pistons, shock positions, rebound, and bladder versus emulsion. Talk about differentials, so differential setup, each diff separately, and then a conclusion. Talk about drive shafts and suspension bind, uh, different types of drive shafts. We talk about gear ratios and the differences in uh, gear ratios and how it affects the handling of the car. We talk about flex and stiffness and of the chassis and also arm stiffness. Uh, we talk about weight distribution, tire choice, how to select the right compound, how to select the right tread. There's some discussion of aerodynamics of bodies and wings. Uh, we talk about setups for different track conditions. I think this will also be something that people will enjoy because there's a chapter for bumpy track setup, smooth track setup, low grip and high grip. And it all builds on the, on the information in the book. So if you read the book first and then you read these chapters, these chapters will really help you understand what the whole book was trying to teach you basically. So you read all the chapters in the book and then these last chapters giving concrete examples of what you do and why on these different tracks will help you to tie it all together. That's at least my hope. So you can provide feedback once you get the book and you read it, provide some feedback and let me know if that's how these last chapters worked for you. And then to finish off the book, we just have a chapter on how to make the most out of your equipment and an afterward acknowledgements and then references. That's it. That's what's in the book. I really hope that you enjoy it. This is the first edition. If the sales are good, if people like it, then there'll be a second edition, which can be improved based on feedback and also once I get it, I'll read through it a few times and I'm sure there'll be things that I think can be improved. And also what I would like to do is if the sales are 
good enough, then I'll look into getting it translated. So at least French, German, Spanish, those seems to be, seem to be sensible languages to translate it into. And then look at Asian countries and, and the way it would make sense to translate it. You know, I don't know, Chinese, Japanese could make sense. The reason I wrote this book isn't because I'm some sort of uh, super nice, helpful, um, altruistic guy. Is that the right word to use? Altruistic. Showing a disinterested and selfless concern for the well-being of others. Unselfish, selfless, self-sacrificing, considerate. Yeah, exactly. So it's not because of anything like that. It was quite selfish, the reason. You see, I had over the years learned so much about car setup and design, but it was all kind of jumbled and mixed up in my head. And there's so much going on that some things were kind of forgotten and I couldn't really find my notes and it, it started to become a bit of a mess. So I figured, you know what, I need to figure this out. Like, why do, why do I learn something and then years later have to relearn it because I forgot it? You know, I need to, I need to have a system, a way to document everything that I've learned and then build on that. Then another thing, I had about 10 years ago written this guide that people still to this day use. Yes, a lot of people printed it out and kept it at the track, but or brought it with them to the track. But the thing is that I had learned a lot more since I wrote that guide, and it was not, it wasn't really embarrassing, but I wasn't sort of proud of it. Let's say so. I knew that I needed to update it. So then I just figured, okay, so here goes. Why don't I do this? Why don't I update the guide by writing? a book about setup and that book is all my thoughts and knowledge in one place in a nice order that I can then use myself for reference genius and the reason why it needed to be a public thing and a book that I would then sell is because that's what forced me and motivated me to get it done and also it forced me to really make sure that I understood the things that I was writing and that I was sure that I'm right, as sure as you can be. Uh, because if I just do it for myself, I can sort of cut corners. I can assume, I can uh, convince myself that I understand something and that's fine. But if I write it and I know that people are going to read it, then I then I can't do that because I don't want to be caught out. What I mean is that I write something that's demonstrably wrong or false. So I really don't want that. So deciding that I was going to write a book and that I was going to make it public forced me to take this seriously, make sure that I understand and uh, know that what I'm writing to the best of my knowledge and belief is correct. And uh, that's it. That's why I did it. So I guess it's a win-win because the readers can surely learn something. And for me, it's a great reference. The book itself, I wanted to write it in a way where any skill level, any sort of experience level of a driver can read it and get something out of it. So a complete beginner can pick up this book and read it cover to cover. They will learn a great deal from it. It's a book that they can keep with them and as they progress and as they get more experience, they can read again and then they will pick up some other things, some new things. A world champion right now or even another designer in the RC industry can get this book and read it and they can also learn something from it. I really worked hard to try and make it into a book that anyone can pick up and enjoy and learn something from. And the crazy thing is that even me, I mean, I wrote it, right? But if I go back and I read it now, it's almost as if I learn something new when I read it. Because the thing is that there's so much information there. When I go back and read it, sometimes I get this weird feeling like, oh, yeah, I haven't thought about that this way. So when I, when I read a chapter, a new thought will pop into my head. I'll connect the dots somehow differently and I will see something 
or think of something that I didn't think of before, that I didn't think when I wrote it, when I didn't think when I read through it the last time. But now for some reason I learned something new and I connected it to this that I just read and I have a new idea. I mean, that's just testament to how complicated car design and setup is. There's no one correct answer. There's, it's not two plus two equals four. It's, it's not a rigid set of rules like that, that it's, you have this and that's the answer. Like everyone gets the same answer. No, it doesn't work like that. It's this really complicated thing where it's a system. Everything affects everything else. And not only that, the way you use that system, that the driver it, him, himself or herself, the driver inputs, they affect how that system performs also. So it's very complicated. There's not one correct answer. And uh, that's why I find it fascinating. And I think, like I said, anyone can read it and they can get something out of it. You know, and writing a book like this, it's, it's been a interesting challenge because the best way I can explain it is this. So, you know, an equation. So two plus two uh, times one divided by one. Now, you know that it's two plus two is four times one is four divided by one is four. But if someone doesn't know any about anything about mathematics, you break it down and you explain, okay, so addition, this is how addition works. And you disregard the times one and divided by one because it doesn't change the result. So someone might look at that equation and think, oh, they understand everything now because they know the addition and the ones don't matter. But you haven't explained multiplication or division to this person, just addition. So two plus two, you add them together, you get four. That's all they know at this point, but they get the correct answer. But then if you just change any either of the one to something else, the answer will be different. So they really need to have that knowledge too to understand the bigger picture, but they don't have it. So this is my attempt at explaining how difficult it is to write something like this because you are knowingly leaving something out that also affects the end result. But you can't explain everything in one go. You have to at the same time break it up. So you are just explaining addition here. So just focus on this, even though you know that, yep, those other things also affect the result. So it's quite tricky to do and to break down and explain in a way where someone who doesn't know much about this can grasp everything step by step. And then next time, okay, now we focus on multiplication and if this was a two instead it would change and then you move on in in that way so i hope i nailed it i did my best but it is really difficult to do that's something i learned while writing this book the thing is that a car setup is that way it's strictly speaking you can't take one aspect of it separate it from the car and then perfectly explain it because that one thing is affected by other things on the car. And when you make a change to it, when you adjust something, it's also changing something else. So to really understand, you have to understand a number of different things and how they interact with each other. So then knowing that, trying to separate one thing and explaining that to someone really difficult. And to make matters worse, no one in the whole world actually understands everything perfectly. No one knows exactly how and why the cars work the way they do, because it's, that's how complicated it is. There are even people who design cars at the highest level for all their, all their professional lives still don't know everything. And to you put two people in a room and they will disagree on things. They may have even big disagreements on some of these topics. So yeah, keep that in mind too. So there you have it. I mean, this has been a massive undertaking really. I mean, to be honest, it's been 20 years in the making, two decades, it's no joke, but that's really the knowledge that's been building up. The, the writing itself, I would say two years is pretty realistic. So two years of having this in my mind and 
writing. And the last sort of COVID lockdown six months has been really active, actively writing. Many a night was spent figuring things out and writing this damn thing. So I really hope that you enjoy it. I hope you learn something. I hope it's a book that you can revisit and read over and over and you can have with you at the track, read a certain section while you're testing stuff and please provide feedback. So comment on this video, email me, whatever way you think of sending feedback, please do so because I think with good feedback, I can improve it further for the next edition. If you disagree with something, you can also let me know because this isn't sort of an exact science, like I said, where there's one correct answer. This is my opinion on car design and setup. And it's possible that someone else has another idea. And when you combine your ideas, that's really how you progress because I have a certain way of thinking about things. Someone else may have a different idea, different view. And then when you discuss those, you might come to a new conclusion, which is further than either of you could have imagined on your own. And I enjoy that too. So please get in touch with all, all forms of feedback. And yeah, don't be shy to get the book if you don't run a JQ car or you don't like me or whatever the case may be. I mean, like you saw, a world if a world champion can buy the book and using his own words, he messaged me when he ordered it. He said, well, he did write it in Swedish, but the translation would be that there's always something to learn that I don't already know today. So that's why I bought the book. So there you go. There's always something new to learn. Like I said, when I read it myself, and I'm going to read it again soon, once it's all done, I'll probably learn something again too, even though I wrote it. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's just how it works. So a huge thank you to everyone, especially the 100, because without them, I don't think I would have ever really got this done. The 100 have been supporting monthly through Patreon and that money helped to go towards, you know, graphic design work and uh, the actual printing of the book itself and just to get me to sit down and write. That's a big deal because I made a promise. I said, hey, we're going to make the book now. You got to get it when it's done. So I had to do it. Now, finally, they get a book. So big thank you to everyone, also all the new orders that are coming in at the moment, and I hope you like it. Over and out.